This is the story of Micaiah Elmore, written by Greg Huffman, narrated by Andrew Joseph de Nicosia IV. <clears throat> this is the story of the only, at the time of writing, girl I have ever loved. She had, probably, more influence on my life than anyone else. Had I not known her, I would have probably been a completely different person, for better or worse. This is the most personal story I have, and also the most important story I have ever written or told. 2001, Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm 14, and I receive my first kiss at a skating rink after asking out my only girlfriend, which I had wrote on a card since I was too shy to say it in person. It was nothing special, just a peck on the lips, and to be honest, I don't think I even enjoyed it that much. But it felt wonderful to finally get some physical affection from a female. The following week, she breaks up with me, because I am too shy, I think she said was the problem. I felt kind of bummed. It wasn't like I had become attached within a week. This isn't the girl the story is about, though. So I go over to my friend Brandale Elmore's house, because at the time we used to play Nintendo 64 a lot at his house. During the very short time I was with my first girlfriend, his sister, Micaiah, started flirting with me, trying to kiss me and whatnot. I had told her I had a girlfriend at the time and I wouldn't cheat, and I have never cheated on a girlfriend to this day. On her, I had known her and her brother for about two years at this point, and while I never hung out with her aside from she used to lay in my lap as we played Nintendo 64, I did meet her first and she introduced me to Brandale. Approximately 1999, I was walking through the trailer park. Yeah, I used to live in a trailer park. Fuck you. Where I used to live, and this girl who had recently moved in stopped me. She asked me where I was going, and I told her I was headed to my house. She asked, can I come? Steamed kind of weird at the time, but I told her she could. So we went through the woods. It's a shortcut to my house. There, my friend Doug was playing my PlayStation, I think. I assume I introduced them and we chatted or something. Fuck, I can't recall that shit. But eventually, she went to get her brother. So he shows him, and he's one weird dude. He has an Afro-esque poofy hairstyle, and it looks like he's wearing lipstick. I believe it was chapstick. When they leave, my Doug friend, referencing Brandale, says, What the fuck was that? Or something like that. <laughs> One interesting tidbit of info before I continue more pertinent part of the story. About a few months, maybe weeks of meeting him, Micaiah tried to play with my cocker spaniel, Max, who didn't like strangers. He bit into her cheek, and she ran throughout the house with blood pouring from her mouth. Later, I jokingly stated calling her Triple M, Max Mouth Micaiah. So anyway, after I break up with the first girl, or rather she breaks up with me, I go back over to Brandale's house to play games with him. Micaiah starts flirting with me again, but despite being single, I don't go for it. It's hard to recall exactly why I didn't, because I know I felt lonely back then, but maybe it's just shyness. I have a bad problem with social anxiety, so it's hard for me to deal with situations that make me feel vulnerable around people. Well, I think I was looking for an excuse to get her to kiss me, so I didn't have to open myself up so much. She asked me, so, are you still dating that one girl? And I say no. She leans in to kiss me, and this time, I don't stop her. So I start visiting Brandale more often. And one thing I forget to, forgot to mention was the fact that I finally moved out of that trailer park not long after I met them. So now I am actually riding a bike like 20 minutes out to see them. Micaiah starts putting her head on my body at different places, joking about finding the most comfortable place to put her head until she finally gets to my penis. This was amazingly sexy to me, because at the time I was very unpopular at school, and the girls weren't into me, and here's this girl already getting dirty with me. We also sneaked kisses while Brendale and I were playing games together, and at one point he said, I saw that! 
One time I went to try a French kiss, which I had never done before and was nervous about trying. But as soon as I was reaching my tongue out, she had already pulled back from the peck. She must have seen this, because she immediately came and gave back to me and had a first French kiss. It was fucking incredible. From then on, we French kissed all the goddamn time. One day, we made this kind of uh, date plan where we would go to the skate rink where I met my first girlfriend. It will be me, her, her brother Brendale, my friend Mickey, and Mickey's sister. Mickey is talking to her about being with me, and she basically came out and said that she'd be willing to have sex with me. This made me feel good about myself, but it also made me very nervous. I admit, I can be a big pussy around uh, stuff like this. The idea of sex made me feel naked and vulnerable. What if I did it wrong? What if it wasn't good? I also found something kind of disturbing. See, I assume. She was 13 years old, but she wasn't. She was 10. Fucking insane, isn't it? I found out more news. I thought she was still a virgin, but she wasn't. She had already had sex with my friend Mickey. Here's another interesting tidbit of info. Mickey comes to me one day, probably a few months before me and Makaya get involved, and he tells me he's lost his virginity. I don't remember if I even took him seriously, but I said, awesome, let's go tell Brendale. And he sounds reluctant to go tell Brendale about it. At the time, I thought it was because he didn't want to spread a bunch of lies to everyone, but now I think it's kind of funny. So Mickey and I, and I think his older sister, she's a month older than me, I believe, we all go into the woods and talk about stuff. And he kind of talks to me into this deal where we take turns having sex with Micaiah. And I kind of accepted into it. And I'm not sure why at the time. I just wanted to have sex and lose my virginity. And I didn't think past that. So we went back to his house. And Mickey's sister goes and talks to Micaiah. She comes back and is kind of laughing and said, She thinks you guys are in love. This made me feel like a total douchebag. We finally headed off to the skating rink. I think I bought everyone a slice of pizza to eat and told them uh, they owed me except for Micaiah, but to this day, I don't think the asshole has ever paid me back. Well, I was new to dating, and to be honest, Micaiah and I weren't officially dating, so I started hugging up on my ex-girlfriend's sister who was there. We did this as friends, so I didn't think it was a big deal at the time, but Micaiah was pissed about it and told Micaiah's Mickey's sister that she was over me. I tried to apologize the whole night, but she would have none of it. When we went home, I spent the night at Mickey's house. I think that night was the first night I ever truly cried and uh, that was when I first cried because I knew I was in love and I had fucked it up. The next morning Mickey and I we go hang out in the woods. Over a period of time we had built this kind of clubhouse out there and complete with the couch and bed. Micaiah met us out there, but she wouldn't talk to me again. I think her and Mickey started flirting, which hurt my feelings. So I went to leave and started crying again. As I was leaving, Mickey tried to stop me from leaving, saying he would stop, but I just had to go home. The one great thing in my life was gone. I should say... A lot of the things about this story are hard to keep in chronological order, and in fact, some of what I'm saying may have happened a little differently than I remember. So it's really hard to remember exactly what happened next. Summer around this time, uh, summer hit, and <clears throat> I used to visit my father whenever he was living there for three months. He moved a lot, so I got to visit a lot of spectacular places. Last year it was San Diego, California, and this year was Albuquerque, New Mexico. 
I dyed my hair blonde for the first time on this vacation. So anyway, I went back to Tennessee. I was living on the Knoxville border, but Mackay and Brandale were living on the other side in Marynardville, Tennessee. For those of you who have seen Inglorious Bastards, that's where Lieutenant Aldo Rain is from. So one day I head back to the trailer park. Mackay is there, and she says I look silly with blonde hair and told me I should dye it pink. This isn't really pertinent to the story, but this is where she started talking to me again, I believe. A few days later, maybe weeks, hell, maybe a month, I can't remember the shit. She's hanging out with a friend. As we're all talking, we both look at each other and kiss. Her friend asks, do you guys know each other? Our response, no. Something I forgot to mention. Not long after we first broke up, I moved further away from the trailer park. We bought a house that was half an hour walk from it, and Makaya used to brag about how much I loved her because I would walk so far to see her every day. Another detail I didn't mention was that she talked me into going to church with her. While I was religious at the time, I really just went to be with her. They got mad at us sitting together, so sometimes she would sit in front of me and we would stick our hands out the window just so we could hold each other's hands. Anyway, we kind of started a trend of breaking up and getting back together. This happened a lot. I think this was her nice way of not cheating on me. I think she would break up with me, then fuck some guys and get back with me and never fuck me. Granted, it was my fault. I never asked for sex. I was too much of a coward. I really just loved being with her, but I also wanted to make love to her, too. Seems kind of corny, but I really didn't want to have sex with her for pleasure. I just wanted to know what it would feel like to share a vulnerable, intimate moment with each other, going slow and looking into each other's eyes. In around October, still 2001, an interesting situation came up. We weren't dating at the time, and Mickey, her, and me, and this other guy were all out in the woods. <sighs> Somehow I think Mickey talked her into having sex with me since I was too chicken shit. She said she would, but only if they were around. I don't know what that was about, but... Later, she told me she didn't want to have sex with me because she loved me, which is just totally fucking blowing my mind. Well, we stripped down somewhat, and I pulled down my pants. The first time I had done this in front of a woman, I got on top of her. I should note that the guys were actually kind of keeping guard, not really within view, so it's not like I exposed myself to everyone. Anyway, I couldn't get it up, and she wasn't helping. I went to French kiss her, and she bit my tongue so hard it hurt for a week after that. Did I tell you she was crazy? She had actually randomly attacked me on various occasions without every provocation. Well, it didn't work out, so she got dressed and went home. Cute, corny tidbit here. After visiting her, I would sit on the steps of this church, waiting for my mother and stepfather to pick me up. While I was sitting there, I would pray to God, begging him to let us work, because I loved her so much. Every time I did this, shit seemed to get worse, so maybe this helped me lead me to become an atheist. Well, shit got worse. This guy who used to go to the church when we went sometimes, not the church, I said, because, you know, a bus came and took us to a place called Hines Creek. We would make fun of me for being with her. Ironically, it turns out, not long after he said this to me, she went and had sex with him. Brandale once told me that irony was God's joke on humanity, 
He said Mark Twain said that, but I looked it up and found no such quote. This really hurt my feelings. I felt crushed. I had loved her so much. I was taught you have sex with those you love, but she was fucking other people because she loved me too much to have sex with me. Things got even worse after that. Turns out, while I was on my summer vacation, she was sleeping with a guy I had met when we were first together. This wouldn't be so bad, except she had gotten pregnant. Two days ago, I was telling this story to a girl I had met just on Facebook because I was half asleep and she was interested in my story. So I finally spent about six hours telling her the whole thing, which if I was sober, me being half asleep is about the same as me being drunk, I wouldn't have felt comfortable doing. Anyway, not to go off on a tangent, but she asked me if I could change anything what had happened back then, would I? I said, not anymore. You see, at the time I was jealous. I loved her so much. I wanted to be the father of the baby. I imagined us happy together, raising a kid together. It seemed romantic. I would have felt loved. I would feel like I was a part of something special. Now I realize that would have been a worse predicament if it was mine. Last I heard, she was still trying to get the child support from the guy. As it was, I held her in my arms despite the fact she was swollen pregnant with another man's child, and it didn't change the fact that I loved her. Last day of 2001, I go with my friend Joe, rest in peace, to a New Year's Eve party. He would always take me to parties, and I would always hate going because I don't like being around people. I guess I just got bored of being alone. I would go anyway, even though I knew they would suck. Anyway, while bored to shit there, I noticed Makai was at the party. Apparently her brother, not Brendale, she has another brother, was dating the girl that lived there, so she tagged along. She danced with me there. It was the first time I had danced with a girl before. But when I went to kiss her, her brother pushed me. He didn't like me dating her, so we went upstairs to hang up. Out, out there. <clears throat> the countdown started and we kissed at midnight 2002. From 2002 on, the story is mostly lost to me, but I remember a few sweet moments we had though. She had come down with the cold and told me not to kiss her, but I said, I don't care, you're worth it to me. The next day, she called me and I told her I had gotten sick, so she said, I told you, which I responded, it was worth it. I also didn't tell her that I loved her until 2002, I believe. One time, we were talking on the phone, and as we were getting off the phone, I thought I heard her say I was putting the phone down. I quickly picked up the phone, and I said, what did you say? She laughed and said, never mind, and I said, no. Tell me, I didn't hear you. She said, I love you. And I responded, I love you too. And we hung up. By summer 2003, I was tired of the bullshit. My father was living in Fort Worth, Texas, my hometown. So I moved to live there permanently. What I didn't really know was it was a nice thing as we were dating at the time but I moved there without calling her and telling her I was leaving she usually called me because her parents hated me one tidbit I forgot to mention was that when we had gotten together for the first time we were getting back from a walk and she gave me this big kiss before going inside and her dad saw it and told me I wasn't welcome back from then on we had to hide seeing each other so we would only meet in church or in the woods. Well, once I got to Texas, I called her house and reached her brother, and he said that she wasn't staying there anymore, so I never called her again. The whole time I was in Texas, I never dated. I came close once, but I didn't really like the girl, so it didn't pan out. I didn't even kiss this girl while I was there. 
2006 hits about April. And I miss Micaiah. I had been thinking about her a lot. You know, they say you never appreciate something until it's gone, but really I think we only remember the good aspects. Sometimes you get it back and realize it wasn't really that great. I realize Brandale uses the internet a lot, so I Google his name and find some alias of his. I search those and come across his email. I emailed him, and a few days later I get a response. He tells me about how his life's going, and etc., and etc., and then we start talking on AIM. Well, this story isn't about him, so he gives Micaiah's AIM account to me, but uh, says she doesn't get on often. A few days later I'm on the internet, and pop! She appears online. I message her. Hey! She responds back with a greeting of her own. I say, guess who? And she asks who it is, and I say, Greg. Right away, she knows who it is. Ironically, though, last I heard, she was dating another guy named Greg. And she says, I miss you. We started talking on the phone. And I find out she has a boyfriend she wants to get married to. They met five months ago. I tell her that's a little soon to be thinking about marriage. At some point, I kind of started pushing us to possibly get back together, but she said there was no more us, which is understandable because I up and left her and she finally moved on. This was the first time she loved a guy more than me and I always imagined her wanting to get back with me if we ever got contact again. In fact, I think back in 2002 she told me she wanted to marry me, so it kind of hurt knowing she didn't feel that way anymore. Regardless, she still wants to see me again, so I make plans to go back to Tennessee somewhere between July 16th and 18th of 2006. My stepbrother and I head out there to stay with my stepfather, his father, but he's actually just visiting, whereas I'm moving down there to stay. As we're picking up Brandale, Makai and her boyfriend drive by us, and we all stop, and she runs over to me and hugs me. It was a great moment. When we got back to the place, it was kind of a different location than the last time I lived in Tennessee. Brendale and I immediately uh, headed off for a walk to his friend's house. Let's just fast forward to the fun part. This story is kind of a side story, which has nothing to do with Micaiah at first, but it's interesting nonetheless. It was dark out. As we leave Brendale's friend's house, so we decide to find a place to sleep. Brendale has a plan. There's this used car lot nearby we can sleep at by climbing into a car for the night. Or at least we can find a better place to stay. We will decide this by flipping a quarter. Heads for car lot, tails for the other. It lands on heads, so we scout the place for a decent car. That's a very spooky place, so we say, fuck the quarter and keep trucking. We come to a church. We try to pass out on the front steps of it, but it's uncomfortable. Luckily, Brendale notices a side door, and wouldn't you know it, it's unlocked. We go inside the church, and Brendale puts on his personal belongings. He puts them on the table or something in the main room. We search the adjacent rooms and find pillows. We notice a basement, and the basement has the only window door in the entire church, which becomes important fast, because as soon as we go down to investigate, a cop drives by. Brandale looks straight at the cop, and he later told me the cop looks straight at him, so he says, fuck it. He didn't actually say that, by the way and opens the door and goes right up to the cop and starts talking. He tells the cop the whole story and explains that the door was unlocked and we weren't breaking in, we were just looking for a place to stay. Brendale always tells me he has good luck and I always tell him that I have bad luck, but on this day, his luck prevailed. The cop checked our IDs and gave us a ride home. I should note, this was my first day back, and I had actually forgotten the way back to my house. Also of note, 
Brandale had asked his parents earlier if I could stay at the house, to which they replied, no. Well, that didn't stop us from deciding to just have the cop drop us off at his house anyway. Brendale decided some espionage-style shit was in order and had me climb through his window with a ladder that was outside. While inside, his sister tarted, ta started, tar started, mm, started talking to him from her room. I guess they have thin walls, which becomes potentially disturbing a month later. She asks when we see Greg again, or something to that effect, and I come up with a plan. He walks into Micaiah's room with me hiding behind him and does a ta-da style introduction for me, which results in her running over to me and giving me a huge hug. He then goes back to his room and we spend the rest of the night talking. We then start flirting and then we start making out. She tells him that even though she's with another guy, she wants to marry, that this just feels right. We pass out with me holding her in my arms, and for the first time I ever literally, still not metaphorical yet, slept with a girl. I wake up, and I hear a long more, and it's her mother outside. I quickly sneak over to Brendale's room, and he's sleeping in the nude. Ugh. I wake him up and eventually we head outside and he said we might as well tell his mother that I had to stay due to uh, circumstances. As soon as we walk outside, she is furious. She always seemed like a real bitch to me. One time I called Brendale and she told me never to call her house again. Anyway, she asked where I slept. Ben Brendale says I slept in his room. There was one problem, though. Brendale didn't lock his door, and his mother came in his room while he was asleep, and of course, I wasn't in there. So he says Greg slept on the floor in Micaiah's room. Well, that went over as well as one would imagine. An obvious bullshit lie like that. She starts saying how his father was going to kick my ass or something. We decided to do some chores for her in hopes she would calm down, and I guess it went pretty well, as I didn't get my ass kicked when the father came home. In fact, he gave me a ride back to my house. August 10th, 2006. I am applying at places to try and find some work. I also try this new energy drink, soft drink hybrid called Vault. I'm OCD, so I just like mentioning the impertinent details. Later that night, I head to Brendale's house. We have this plan to camp outside his house. Well, when I get there, his parents bitch about it, so it doesn't really work out, and I don't ever write home. I pretend like I do, and Micaiah and I make plans to meet outside when her parents go to bed. As I permeably the area outside her house, it starts to rain. Sounds retarded, but I think I even begged God, whom I didn't really believe in anymore at the time, as I was in my agnostic stage, for me and Micaiah to finally make love that night as I walked in the rain. I had earlier told Micaiah on the phone that I didn't want to have sex when she was still with that guy, and I wanted it to be special when it happened. Oh, I didn't mention she had just broken it off with that guy. <clears throat> Finally, I saw a flashlight. Micaiah was in a coat and came down to meet me. We had walked and talked for a bit, and then we grabbed each other and kissed as the rain fell on us. I don't remember if it was that romantic a moment or not, but I was just glad to see her again, as I had done the previous time, but I don't know. She decided to sneak me into her house again, as I had done a previous time, but this time I was even more nervous about it, and I get nervous pretty easily. When we went to her room, and due to our clothes being soaking, it was a good excuse to strip down. She had nothing but a shirt on, and she climbed onto her bed, while I only had my underwear on. 
Now, I know everyone gets nervous, nervous their first time, but this time the sex wasn't what made me nervous. It was the fact that her parents would fucking kill me if they discovered us. I crawled on top of her and we kissed a little. And I took her shirt off and now she was fully nude. I kind of gave her the signal that I wasn't quite erect yet and she asked, do you need some help? I sat back and slipped my underwear off and she leaned forward on the bed and started going down on me. I couldn't feel the thing because I was so nervous, but it looked fucking amazing. In my head I was thinking, holy fucking shit, I'm actually getting a blowjob. After a while she wanted me to continue on to penetration, so I crawled back on top of her and immediately went flaccid again. She started sucking on me again, and I tried again for sexual intercourse, but no dice. She tried to mount me in hopes that that would work, to which she didn't. She then asked me if I had erectile dysfunction. I told her I just didn't feel comfortable because I was in an unwelcome house. We sat and talked for a while, played around, and did a little groping. She got up and went to the mirror, and I followed her rubbing my penis against her butt. I held her and rubbed around her body, but felt too shy still to touch near her breasts, so she put her hands on mine and led them there, and I squeezed her breasts. Mood-killing tidbit. When I stood up, I felt something wet on my penis. I looked down, and the dog had just licked my penis, so technically I got two blowjobs in one night. Yeah, it was kind of gross or weird, but it's not like I put peanut butter on my dick and led him to it. Well, eventually we got back on the bed. I was able to calm down enough and get my penis erect. I crawled on top of her and we started going at it. I heard her say something to the effect of, I can't believe we waited five years for this. Now, without proper context, that could be seen pretty... <sighs> pejoratively, but she meant it in a good way, and it made me feel good. She made the sexist noise when I first put my penis into her. I can't even explain. It was like a moan in a very low voice, but it turned me on so much. Then she would kiss on my bicep as I made love to her. Her bed wasn't very stable, and it kept slamming into the wall. Luckily, she had put the music on loud, so I guess no one would notice how noisy we were. At one point, her sneakers were rocking back and forth. At one point, her speakers were rocking back and forth, and it looked like they might fall over. She scratched my back to hell, and I had marks for the next day, but I found it arousing. I kept trying to give her looks into my eyes, but she wouldn't only glance and then look away. I tried going slow a few times, but she didn't seem to enjoy it so much, so I usually just went faster. I eventually got tired, and she asked if she wanted to be, and I asked if I, and asked if she, if I, if I asked if she wanted to be on top, but she said her vagina went dry, so we stopped. I, I didn't orgasm, but I still loved it. She said we lasted for an hour and a half. We got dressed, and she brought me some Kool-Aid, and lied down on my lap. She had school the next morning, so I had to go. I had brought a camera, and we took a few pictures from the day that I lost my virginity, and I snapped one before leaving of her, and then I just left. While she was 16 at the time, I was 19. What happened was not illegal, though. There's a four-year law in Tennessee, so as long as the age difference is less than four years apart, it's legal to have sex with an underage girl. Next month, uh, I think, was when I finally got the pictures developed, and I loved being able to look at her in pictures. The only thing I was upset about was that I let Brendale take the picture for us, and it turned out real crappy. It was way too far back, and everything looked dark. Wait, wait. There was one very important detail I forgot to mention. As I left her house, her dog followed me. I walked for four hours in the rain, wearing soggy clothing. My toes had become waterlogged, sore, and were bleeding. At about 6 a.m., I reached the place where one of my friends was working with his uncle, and I passed out 
on his, in his in his car in his car. Yeah, the dog had uh, followed me the entire trip. His uncle gave me a ride home, and I went to sleep in my friend's house. I woke up, and my stepfather was telling me about her mother calling, leaving threatening phone messages. The dog was gone, and unless they got it back, they would take legal action. This scared me at the time because I didn't know about the four-year loss, so I thought that could come up. Luckily, they found the dog, and all is well. Of course, now they hated me even more, if that was possible. October 8th. 2006. I'm going to Micaiah's friend's house to meet them both. As soon as I step onto the porch, <clears throat> Micaiah gives me a running hug so hard I nearly fall right off of it. I go inside, but the father's mad because he wasn't given warning of me coming to visit, so he takes Micaiah and I to her house. Well, it doesn't sound too pleasing, so as soon as we reach her house, I step out of the car and walk down the street at the end of her driveway. After a while, after a good while, I see her coming down to meet me, and we go to another of her friend's house, a guy that owns a ranch with some horses. Micaiah's mom starts driving down there, so they ride me into a small barn house. Espionage again. When she leaves, Micaiah decides she wants to ride a horse and asks me if I will ride with her. Normally, I wouldn't be too much of a pussy about this, but I wanted to have something to remember with her, so I agree. It was pretty fun, I must admit, but I actually fell off the horse later. I wasn't hurt. Then we head to the creek and hang out there. A prophetic tidbit I forgot to mention. I told the guy, I think his name was Ray, that I was glad everything had gone okay. To which he replied, well, the day isn't over. It starts getting dark, so we head back over to her house. I come in the back door, and Brendale says in a very spoky tone, Dude, you aren't welcome here. He didn't say it in a way that was implying that he didn't want me to come over, but it was just a warning to me. We went inside, and I had this plan to spend the night in the woods behind her house, and they could meet me in the morning. However, Micaiah wanted me to sleep in her room, and she had a very sexy-looking shirt, too, so I couldn't turn her down. We go into her room, and I think to avoid making a noise. I didn't quite close the back door all the way. This becomes very important very soon. She locks the door of her room, and quickly someone comes and tries to open it. I hear a voice. Micaiah, open this door. At first I thought it was her brother Brendale because it kind of sounded like him. However, it wasn't. It was her father, and he knew I was in there. I started to back into the closet, but it probably would have done no good. I was scared shitless. Then something interesting happens. The very dog that had caused me so many problems two months ago pressed on the back door. The back door swings open, and the dog runs outside. Her father goes to get his keys to chase after the dog, and he is doing so. Micaiah looks right at me and says, Greg, run! I bolt out of the doors like a bat out of hell. As I am running down the street, I see the dog running in front of me. And I also notice lights catching up to me. Her dad stops the car and gets out, and I am standing by the dog. I start apologizing to him, and he says, Well, at least help me get my dog. So I shoo the dog over to him and puts the dog in the car. Then he probably woke up the whole neighborhood. You! Our one lucky motherfucker. I was going to kick the shit out of you if you ever come around here again. And the whole time he is saying this, I keep saying, I'm sorry, sir. He eventually drives back and I'm walking home again. Four hours later, I get to my friend's work, or should I say his former work site, as he isn't working there anymore. That means I have to keep walking. Not much longer, a cop stops me. This scares me because I thought they called the cops on me. They have me empty my pockets, and then they start verbally harassing me. They ask me if I smoke pot, to which I reply, I don't. I had recently gone straight edge at the time. Then they say to me, you didn't complete high school, did ya? To which I reply that I had. They checked my ID, and when I was cleared, they offered me a ride home. I had them drop me off at an abandoned farmhouse my stepfather had just moved away from. 
I had various reasons for doing this. One of them was probably the fact that the friend I was rooming with did a lot of drugs, and he had a druggy friend over, and I didn't want to get him, and possibly us, into trouble. That night I walked up to his place, we call the mountain, because my stepfather left a tent up there, so I slept inside of that. The following morning I took another four-hour walk into Fountain City where my roommate was living. When they got back, they asked me what the fuck had happened, and I said, man, it was so fucking crazy, I don't even want to talk about it right now. I didn't tell the whole story to them until like a month later, just because I was so shaky about the whole thing. One day, my stepfather comes into the house. I think it was the same day as the release of the PlayStation 3. He says, we have to get going, the cops will be here soon, and I'm like, what the fuck? Apparently, Micaiah had run away from home, and I was assumed culprit who had housed her. I told her an amber alert was put on. I was told an amber alert was put on me, but that turned out to be bullshit. My roommate's uncle had stopped by the house earlier and snooped around, which I later found out was because the cops had stopped by my place where he was working asking about Micaiah. When we went and hid out over at my roommate's mom's house, uh, as I checked the internet for the Amber Alert, they watched the TV for it. They called the parents of Micaiah, and I think everything got worked out. I think she was staying with a new boyfriend she had or something. <sighs> April 17th. 2007, I go to pick up Brendale to hang out. I had recently got my camcorder that my mother had bought me for Christmas slash birthday combo gift. I was born on January 15th, so I took it with me to film footage. Makai was there, and I got to take footage of her, and then we dropped her off at her ex-boyfriend's house, but right before she got out, she gave me the last kiss I have ever received from her to this day. May 2007. I can't put up with the adventures anymore, so I run away again. This time to Spokane, Washington, where my father had moved. I started calling Makai, and it turns out her boyfriend went to jail for violating probation or something, so she starts talking to me more, which was nice. <clears throat> I hadn't told her that I lost my virginity to her, so I finally told her, and she said that was sweet, that she was my first. Later on, AIM... She told me she wanted to marry me again. Now, I have this thing about wanting my life to work out like a movie. I think it's because of my OCD. I remember something Brendale told me in 2000 before I started dating his sister. He said to me, you know what would be cool? If you married my sister. I guess I wanted that to be an auspicious sign of how my destiny would work out so perfectly. It didn't. While waiting for her to turn 18, she found another guy, and they got married. About a year or so later, they got a divorce. So now she's with that other guy named Greg, last I heard. She refuses to even be my friend anymore because when I had brought my girlfriend with me to pick up Brendale while she was there with her boyfriend, I wouldn't talk to her much because I felt awkward. I am happy to say I have finally moved on after being obsessed with her for so many years.